What's up, everybody? It's Broken Bones here, and welcome to Redstone 101. Today, I'm going to be showing you all the different ways that you can use a comparator so you guys can use it in your own builds. Prepared right here in front of me are a bunch of different demonstrations of things that you can do with comparators, and this is about everything that I can possibly think of. I don't know how else you could use a comparator, and so let's go ahead and get started. First on our list is exactly what the comparator was intended to do, compare the items that are inside of a container. So this is the first container. This is a minecart hopper, and as you can see, if you put some items in there, we get ourselves some redstone signal coming out of it. And the more items that we put in, the more redstone signal we get out. And as you can see, it keeps growing and growing and growing until the minecart's completely full and it goes and reaches maximum strength. In order for a comparator to detect uh, items inside of a minecart hopper, that minecart hopper must be placed on top of a detector rail, and those look like this, with a little square dot in the middle of them. And so that will go ahead and make it to where the comparator can detect what items are inside of it and whatnot. And so as you can see, that works. Now, five, five items is going to get you a maximum signal strength coming out of the comparator there. However, five stacks is not what you need for every single item. So let's go ahead and fill up our inventory. So as you can see, this is a chest and we've put nine stacks almost double yet we've got less than half the signal strength and that's because a comparator detects the amount of items compared to the amount of items that can still go in so this is based on a percentage system so it's directly related to exactly uh let's see the signal strength goes up to 15, so that would mean that whatever container that you're putting items into, you can divide that by 15, and that is going to be how many items it's going to take to reach another signal strength. Comparators can also detect items inside of a dropper, dispenser, or any other type of container, and same thing goes for this. So the more items that you put in, until you reach the full capacity of it, it'll reach all the way up to full signal strength. And it works just the same way. It works out of a percentage rate, where the more items you put in, the more signal strength will get out until it's full. Moving on to something a little more complicated, subtract mode. Comparators have this funny little thing on the front that you can play with that turn it into, into subtract mode, which is a rather interesting feature. Now, subtract mode means that you can subtract the amount of signal strength from this area right here into the side of it. Now, that has to be redstone dust. It cannot be a block like this. It has to be redstone dust. Let's go and grab some of that and put that back in, back in there. So, uh, you can also use this in both ways, this way and that way. And let's go ahead and demonstrate how that works. So the higher up that we turn this, let's go ahead and take this off. Uh, that's the subtract mode. So let's go ahead and put that on normal mode. Okay, so this is how a comparator normally works. When you have something like an item frame in front of it and it has an item, the more you turn that item, the further up the lights go. As you can see, as I turn it, the lights are getting further and further away. I'll go and stare at it like this. And you can see that turning until you get all the way back to normal, then it comes all the way back down. Now, you can change that with this one as well. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how that works. So basically, this one working the way it is without this little button up, without that, okay, what this does is this puts out that signal strength, whatever this is on, on this item frame, until this overrides what it is. So basically these are the same. This is signal strength of one. This is signal strength of one. This is not overpowering that, so therefore it's going to go through. Let's go ahead and overpower it. All we have to do is click this over by one, and all of a sudden that goes away. However, if we turn this up by one, we get our signal strength back. Now see how that works? That's pretty interesting. Now the difference is, is that this is not actually subtracting the amount of signal strength from this side. This is literally overriding it, making it to where it either turns on or turns off. So as you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and turn this like this, and that's going to go ahead and turn it all the way off. As you can see, we got all three lamps that go off, and that'll continue to stay until we go all the way back to normal like this. So as you can see, we don't get one, two, or three. We get all three of them back on at once because it's not actually subtracting the amount of signal strength from this side, as I said earlier. That's what this mode is for. So when we do that, as you can see, we got one less signal strength. So let's go ahead and turn this up a little bit, and you'll see that with every turn, it goes up. Now, if we turn this one with every turn, it'll go down. So as you can see, that's directly subtracting the amount of signal strength from this comparator with that mode. So that's how these work. This is subtract mode, which means that you can, you can subtract the amount of signal strength that goes into the side. And the other mode this way is just a strict override system. You'll get the full, uh, you'll get the full amount of whatever it's detecting coming out until this side is overridden with more signal strength than it's being put in from the back. 
Compared to pulse extenders are a lot simpler. Over here, if we press this button, you can see that the button unclicks, yet the lamp is still powered because this pulse extender is extending the pulse of redstone that we're putting into this lamp. So as you can see here, we've got a block right here. This extends the pulse for double the amount of time than this does. If you have it set up this way, as you can see, if you hit the button, the button unclicks, but the pulse is not quite as long. It's a little bit shorter than it is if you do this. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see now it lasts for about three seconds rather than just a second and a half. Pulse extenders can be made much, much larger, as large as you like, provided that you have the amount of pulse going into the system as it takes to go all the way around. Each comparator here is going to take one tick to go all the way around. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've got ten ticks until this redstone is going to come back around. And lucky for me, these stone buttons put out a ten tick pulse. So as you can see, right around the time that this comparator comes back, the pulse is done from the button. Now, as you can see, this is a lot longer. This is going to last like 10 or 15 seconds until this actually goes out and during that time you can see this decreasing in brightness and that is due to the fact that these guys these uh, uh, these comparators these put out the signal strength that uh, that it reads so basically whatever it's getting it's gonna go ahead and put that out so over here if you don't have this block like I was saying earlier uh, this is basically putting in a hundred percent signal strength of whatever it's reading and so therefore this redstone right here is receiving a hundred percent signal strength of whatever that comparator is putting out. So therefore that doesn't decrease until it reaches over here because now this redstone is getting 100% output from this comparator. However, this one over here is getting one signal strength less than that one over there. So therefore it gets a decrease, then it decreases into this comparator. So now we've got a decreased signal going in and it makes its way around. And again, then you get 100% of the decrease signal, which is the same as it was over there, and it just goes down. So every 10 ticks, you're gonna lose one pulse length is how that kind of works. So that's about a second. So that's why it lasts about 15 seconds. And as I said earlier, you can add more comparators. You can add as many as you like. All that matters is that the input that you're putting in has the amount of ticks that it's going to take for that pulse to go all the way around. And unfortunately, we can't get out of this cheap. You're going to have to use multiple comparators because you can't put two blocks on this side and hope that the signals are going to go around even longer than it will if you just put it on one side. Problem is, the signal strength goes around, but it never goes out because it never has a chance to decrease. Remember, you got to be able to decrease it as it goes around, at least on one side. Here, you're getting 100%. Over here, you're getting 100%. Over here, you're getting 100% and another 100%. You don't have a chance of decrease until you actually put a piece of redstone dust right there. And as you can see, it'll go ahead and burn out here in just a few seconds. Dropper and dispenser circuits are another cool thing that you can put in your redstone bag of tricks. Over here we have a redstone uh, dropper circuit that will go ahead and empty itself all the way down. So as you can see, if you put any items in there, I'm getting them back in my inventory. And even if you just put one in there, it's still going to empty it. The way this circuit works is off the comparator subtract mode, as we uh, demonstrated earlier. The only difference is, is that instead of actually having two different inputs like I have here, we're actually subtracting the signal from itself just by re, uh, regenerating it back into itself. And I'll show you how that works here. So as you can see, I've turned the sound off so you guys don't have to hear that annoying clicking sound. But as you can see, the, the signal from those items being in that uh, comparator or inside that uh, dropper there are going into this comparator and it's being fed around here being transferred into, into this block and then it's being transferred into this repeater here and every single tick that's going to put a full signal strength right into that comparator in subtract mode which is why every single tick is going off and then it goes back on because it notices that it has items in there because obviously once it goes off it comes back around no more signal strength it notices that there's items in there so it turns back on goes back around and then it says oops I'm subtracted turns back off goes back around sees items in it and it's just a big long pulse it's it's a lot of stuff that redstone doing, which is a big reason why it's so laggy. However, if you build your redstone circuits properly, you'll notice that most of them have no redstone in the on position. You'll notice here, mine don't have any redstone in the on position. And over here, this one does. However, there is a slight benefit. This one's much, much faster. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that here. So if we go ahead and put those items in there, check out how much faster that is. Those come out at lightning speed. However, 40 items stay in the system. It doesn't quite empty itself. And that's because this uh, comparator here, that's on subtract mode, uh, puts the signal strength out right here, but it's not quite enough to go reach here. So this needs a signal strength of two. And once it does, it actually goes ahead and fires this, which uh, makes the item go out and it subtracts from itself, which is a much quicker circuit than including the, uh, 
the repeater into the circuit. That's what I've done over here. As you can see, the repeater is on the back side of the circuit. That's what this little jig jog is here for. As you can see, this is much more compact. However, it's a little bit more laggy and you don't get all the stone out of your system. When using these circuits, that would greatly depend on how quickly you have items coming into them. If these have a lot of items coming into them, you might want to use that one because it spits them out faster. If you don't have a lot of items coming in, you might want to use this one just because this one's lag free. Now, if you had a lot of items coming in, you might need to build yourself an item sorter. Or if you want to go ahead and build a secret entrance to your base, this is the type of thing that you would build to go ahead and have a secret item that you throw in. Now, let's go ahead and see how to build these. First up is the standalone item sorter. This item sorter will break if you put it next to other item sorters. That's why it's called a standalone. If you put it next to them, the signal strength will increase so much so that it'll bleed over into the neighboring one, making the neighboring item sorter drain its items too, even though no items are going in, which eventually breaks this. If these all drain out, you don't have much of an item sorter left. But just a little explanation of what's happening. The items that go in are going to de be detected by the comparator uh, in this hopper right here. So this uh, comparator is going to read that. Right now we have a signal strength of 1 with 22 items in there. So as soon as we get 23, that will go ahead and bleed over into this. And that will go ahead and take out into our uh, repeater here, which is going into that redstone torch, which is locking this hopper, uh, not allowing these items to flow down. So as soon as we have more, let's go ahead and use the system here. And also, too, even if you don't have uh, just comparators, you have something else in there too, some other trash of some sort, this will make sure that they go into the trash bin and not your item sorter. So as you can see there, that light just went off because the items are done. We got all of our comparators over here, and then all of our trash ended up over here. Another thing I recommend doing on your item sorters is putting this repeater here on two ticks. I'll show you what happens when you don't put it on two ticks and you just leave it in there like that. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So once we put our comparators in here, you're going to get this flickering, which is no good. That's that signal strength going on and off, on and off, which is very, very laggy. More laggy than it just being on. And neighboring that standalone item sorter is the tileable item sorter. These are unbreakable as well. Sometimes they're called that, the unbreakable item sorter. And that's because of the fact that the signal strength that the hopper puts out cannot bleed over into the neighboring system. It might be able to bleed over up here, but down here where it actually matters, it will only go to the third spot. It won't bleed over into the fourth spot. So again, we're going to put our, compare, or our uh, repeaters down here on two ticks. The redstone torch goes down there, which is right below the comparator block. That's how you build these. And you can take an output from both of these, the standalone and the uh, unbreakable, out the backside like this, and that'll make it to where if you want to open up your door or something like that, and you had a, uh, say you had a hopper minecart right here on top of this hopper, and you threw an item on the ground and it sucked it up, then that will go ahead and put an output right here, and you can have that open up a door of some sort. And if you're really good at redstone and you want to get even more complicated, you could put a couple of these together, making it to where different items open up different doors or do different things inside your base. And one thing you got to watch out for when you're building these are these hopper placements. These hoppers need to be either running into the side of that uh, comparator just like that. It needs to be pointing in some direction other than into each other or one way or the other, but not down. It cannot be pointed down. Once it gets pointed down, this comparator system no longer works. And same goes for the standalone item sorter as well. However, this one over here can handle much more items. It'll go ahead and separate everything right next to each other and also put the trash over in the trash bin. And it'll give a signal output on different outputs as well. Let's go ahead and demonstrate that here. Let's go ahead and put everything into the system. So as you can see here, we're getting our trash. That's coming over here. It's not going into any of them. The trash is gone, and now we're getting our comparators, which is giving us a output on that. Next is going to be the repeaters, and those are flowing in just like so. Next you'll get an output on the redstone torches and those are now starting to flow in. Next will be the redstone itself and as you can see you get an output whenever those items are flowing in. This system right here is a great way to keep your chest nice, neat, and sorted. However, if you're looking to do something else with your chest, there's other ways that comparators will detect that. One is through an observer. They will detect change in several different ways. So the one is just the fact that it has something in there. So no matter what, as you can see, we got a, a pulse came out just for a second. But no matter how many more items I put in here, the pulse never changes, and that's because this isn't detecting the amount of items that are going in. It's just detecting regardless if it's on or off. So as you can see, as we empty it, we'll get another pulse coming out because now it's off. Comparators can also be detected by observers on the bottom side as well. And as you can see, we'll get an output from that. So let's go ahead and check, keep an eye on that, uh, 
on that lamp down there. And as you can see, if we put one in here, we get ourselves a redstone output just like that. Now, if we put another one in there, we don't get anything else, nothing else. It's just literally if it's on or off. If you want to detect the amount of items inside of a chest, you would have to go to the redstone on top of the observer in order to, det to detect that. Now, as you can see, if we come over here, we'll put some items in, we get ourselves a redstone pulse. Then if we put more items in, we get another redstone pulse. Now we got a redstone signal of two. When we hit three, we get another pulse, and that's because it's changing states. These circuits right here could be useful, but I'm not really sure for what. Uh, they're more useful for things like pranks and tricks and, and, and traps that you could set on your friends. For instance, this trap right here that I have set up, here's a comparator out the back with an observer, just like this circuit right here, and I'm using that circuit for this trap. So if you come over here and your buddy walks in and he sees, ooh, some diamonds, he's going to take those, and the next thing you know, he's trapped inside, he can't get out, and oh, you're dead. Oh yeah, with a blast that size, you're definitely going to die. And on that note, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys learned a little bit something about these comparators. I know they can be kind of confusing, but I hope that I was able to go ahead and reiterate some of that stuff for you guys, explain to you guys how these work with subtract mode and pulse extending and all that different cool stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys did, please remember to hit that like button for me, subscribe if you guys are new, ring that notification bell, and share this video with all your friends. Thank you all very much for tuning in. I'm broken bones and i'll see you guys next time take it easy everybody